Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial. And this is a really special video tutorial because it is in fact a clip, a lesson from the course that we're about to put out called Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. All right, so what I've done is we just finished recording all of the lessons for this course and it's super great. It's jam packed with a ton of information, it teaches you how to set up your QuickBooks. If you're a real estate investor, you have rental properties, you do flips, you do rehabs. Even if you do residential remodeling, there's some really good info for you there as well. We take you through the setup. We talk about recording the purchase of a property. We talk about how to manage the operations of your business, how to do the sale of a property, reporting, etc. This specific video is actually the last lesson of the course where I show you how you can keep really valuable information in QuickBooks Online and then export it to a template that lives in Google Sheets or Excel and have all these cool reporting that's going on. All right, so that's what I show you in this video. And um, it's just kind of a taste of what's gonna be in the course. And for those of you who do sign up for the course, um, you're gonna get that template. So that's pretty exciting as well. All right, so if you're interested after seeing this video, we have a VIP list that we're kind of giving early access, we're giving special discounts to, so sign up. There's obviously no commitment or anything there. You're just gonna get those deals ahead of time. All right, so enjoy this lesson from Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. Hey there, welcome back to Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp, Module 6, and we have a lesson here about external reporting. And this is actually the last official lesson of Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We certainly plan on adding more and involving the course over time, but you've made it to the last of the baseline lessons uh, that, that are part of the curriculum. So congratulations on getting here. I saved this one for last because I think it's kind of fun and I think it helps to understand the huge power that you now have at your fingertips with all the really good organized information and data that we've put into QuickBooks, okay? So um, as you know, there's really some great stuff that you can do with QuickBooks reporting and we've shown a lot of that. Uh, however, if you're like me, you might have some other needs, right? You wanna see things in a different way. First, uh, specifically, for those of you who are doing rehab projects, I don't think QuickBooks does that great a job, especially when you're comparing to a budget. So I'm gonna show you in this video is how it's kind of an example of how you can set up an external reporting template. In this case, it's gonna be in Google Sheets. And you can have QuickBooks deliver that data and you can see anything you want to with your projects, okay? And what's super cool about this is the template that I'm gonna show you today is really advanced and it's pretty intense. It's available for you. So if you want it, you can have it, okay? So you can download that. All right, so some guiding principles about external reporting. One thing's for sure, QuickBooks is always going to be the source of truth. So if you export the data and something doesn't look right, you might feel tempted to edit it right there on the external report. Don't, it's not gonna do anything, just simply keep QuickBooks as the source of truth. If something doesn't look right, QuickBooks needs to be updated. We're gonna be leveraging save reports, okay? So we went over that in the last few videos about how you can customize and save reports. And these reports are gonna look a little different. It's just gonna be like a list but they're gonna be set up in such a way that I can import them quickly into my Google Sheet to get the reports I want, okay? And then you'd also set up some kind of repeating cadence to export and import into a reporting template, okay? So let's see this all in action. I'm gonna scoot over to first my template. So what I have here is a template set up and I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger just for a bit. Okay, so I have this template set up where it's going to be where I paste information. So right now it's blank. I'm gonna have my saved report set up so that I can grab a bunch of information and kind of dump it all here. And this whole template is set up for it. A few things that you're gonna to wanna to do for this template specifically ahead of time is set some budgets, okay? So you remember we went over our products and services list. And I had that list of you know 26 or so products and services. If you're doing any kind of budgeting, you'd wanna upload that and just kind of paste that in here because we're going to do a comparison of a budget. So right here I have 65 Central Park and I have a bunch of products and services and then for each I have a budget for those, all right? We can talk about how to create those budgets but I'm gonna assume you have a way of doing that right now and you're just gonna paste those all in, okay? We're also gonna be setting up ahead of time our lists. So what are our projects? Now these are our projects as they read in um, QuickBooks, okay? So we're using projects still. 
in project reporting is good, but this is going to be a little bit stronger. I mean, these are some lists again that we're, we're pulling from for the whole template to work. And then lastly, we're going to talk about labor rates. So um, we didn't do timesheets too much in the course, but it is important to know that you can do it. So if you have workers and they're logging time in QuickBooks, we can dump that data out too so that we can see not only the costs of all the materials and subcontractors, but also our internal labor. Okay, so I'm going to leave this as it is for now and let's jump over to QuickBooks. Okay, so what I have in QuickBooks, if I go to my projects, I have three projects that are underway, 34 long renovation, 456 maple renovation, and 65 central park renovation. Okay. Now I can go into these and, and look at the, the transactions and the reports, but again, this is a rehab. I'm not going to have any income. Okay. Um, I'm just, and I have negative profit. Okay. So this is kind of useful, but really what I want to do is get something a little bit more expansive. Okay. So what I've done is I've set up a couple of saved reports and they're in a group called external reports, external export. All right, and so this is um, a list of transactions that pertain to these projects, okay? And it's set up in such a way that I have my columns exactly how I want them. So what I can do with this is really quickly just export it to Excel and I can go and grab that information from Excel and just really simply copy everything and by the way, as you're probably guessing, this is a great task for a VA to set up some training and to have your VA help out with this. And then just in this cell, go edit, pay special, and go values only. Okay, so those are all in there and you see some magic to start to happen. And then the only other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab time. So I kept time separately, I'll show you why in a second. So time is another report here. Now notice I'm in 2020, that's just to keep everything separate. So time I have a similar looking report. It's not gonna paste in exactly, so there's one little step we gotta do first. And all that little step is I have to add a few columns just so this paste can go smoothly. I'm just gonna add five columns. Oh, I gotta get rid of my clipboard here. All right, so I added a bunch of columns there. Let's make them smaller. I don't really need them to be any specific size. Okay, now I can grab all of this information and these are timesheets, okay? It's all sample data. It's actually from my residential remodeling business that I stole some of this information from. So let me grab all that, copy it, and then come back over to our template, scroll to the next cell. And by the way, you're also, for those of you who are really uh, technically in tune, you're probably thinking of ways to automate this process with the API and you can certainly do that as well. Okay, so there is ours and employees. So I pasted everything in and then here's the magic. That's really all you do. And then you have a template kind of report over here that's going to grab all the information. So what this is doing is reading all the information from the data tab. Okay, and I've set this up. Now, you're one thing I'm going to say, disclaimer here, what I'd like to look at is maybe not exactly what you would like to look at, but I'm just showing you the power and what you're potentially able to do with something as powerful as Google Sheets. So right now I have 65 Central Park and you see that I have my total spending, expenses and then labor, 90,000 plus 9,000 labor, I got 99,000 total. What I'm showing here is my top five spend categories, expenses and labor then all other and then I have here an expense breakdown of those categories to see how much I'm spending in all of my of my areas okay I also have spending by week okay I can look at how much I'm spending on a weekly basis both in expenses and labor as you can see here I'm looks like I'm spending money maybe I'm paying subcontractors at the beginning of this project and then my labor starts coming in at this time okay what else do we have I have a budget burn down so I'm going to show you a budget. Now let's just look at the budgets for a second. So 65 Central Park, I have these budgets for all of those categories, okay? That's how much I expected to, to spend. So if I go to here, I have what's called a budget burn down. So it looks like I had a total budget of 101,000. And as I spend money, I'm burning down that budget, hopefully not going past zero. It looks like I have a little bit of money left still. And then I have my labor breakdown over here as well. So this is my workers, Chris, John, and Gary, how much they're working and then the total over here. So you can see this is, was a big week, you know, a lot of people working, all right? And then if we scroll down one more, 
we have here all of our categories, our expenses and labor, so that's a total, compared to the budget, and then the, how much is remaining. And we have a little chart over here showing where I've overspent, anything on the left of the axis here, and then areas where I haven't quite spent all my budget yet. I might have some remaining. And you can see I have a total remaining budget of $3,829, okay? So these reports are kind of just ready to go. All you have to do is paste that data. And my favorite part about reports like this is that we can switch the project and see the next report, okay? So if I wanted to come here and switch this to say 456 Maple, I can do that and the whole thing is going to dynamically update, okay? I like to make all of my reports kind of like that. All right, so there's 456 Maple and then if I do 34 Long, there's that one. Okay, and so what does this mean? So I, you see I call it template. And so you could keep toggling back and forth with this. You could do that and that's fine. Or you can take this and copy it. Okay, and now I can maybe call this one 65 Central Park. Okay, and then maybe I copy it again and this is gonna be 456 Maple, okay? And then I would change this to be 456 Maple. Okay, and then one more, let's duplicate it one more time and we'll call this one 34 Long. Okay, and make sure you switch it up here. So now I can dump the data and I can just toggle between these tabs to see what's going on with all my projects, okay? Again, we have our top spending, we have our, um, our spending by week. The burn down is probably my favorite chart. I'm gonna look at uh, four, five, six maple. I haven't looked at all these compared to budgets yet. So this one here, this one is cool because it kind of goes under. So you see I overspent here. Obviously you don't wanna see that, but that's, that's what's happening. Okay, so you can see how you did on this project. Let's see how 34 long looks. 34 long looks like I was almost right on with that one. All right, I'm just gonna do this real quick. Look at that report. Looks like I didn't spend as much as I thought in flooring. These charts are dynamic, which is great. So they update based on like the dates. So if a project has different start dates, the axes are gonna update themselves, okay? So this is what's possible with QuickBooks and Excel or Google Sheets, right? You can put this sheet in a shared drive that everybody has access to. You can of course also print these reports into PDFs or whatever they need to be. So here's 34 long. I could print this report and I can do it as a PDF. Okay, so this, this dialog comes up and I can just save this as a PDF. We'll call it 34 long report. All right, now that's available for me on my desktop. All right, so super official, super cool looking, right? So I, again, the data lives in QuickBooks. There's nothing to update here. If I looked at this and I thought, you know, something's off here, it makes no sense for me to go in here and edit anything here. If there's an issue, go to QuickBooks, edit it, update it, and then re-export. Okay, now it does take some time to get it figured out, like how the column should be set up. You can take this, um, take this sheet and use it and then set everything up the same way my columns are. The only things you're going to be editing is you're going to be updating your budgets, you're going to be updating your lists, so what is your list of projects, and right here what I'm doing here is I have a list of the projects as um, QuickBooks calls them, so they have the customer and then the project name, and then all I'm doing here is I'm converting it into something a little bit easier to read, and then here's my list of products and services, and then these are just for some, some cool um, calculations that I have going on. So you can kind of leave those. And then you'd also put in your rates. So who are your employees? And then what are their rates? If their rates change, so like if, you know, this is 1st of January, if 630 2020 rates change, okay, the system will update for that, okay? So if we look at our rates on the data list, so rates are right here you can see that they start to change whenever that date hits, okay? So it's all dynamic in that way. Okay, so this is an example of a cool template. I actually use a template like this for my renovation business. I actually have a couple lines for revenue. 
as opposed to just cost. When you're doing a rehab, it's just cost. But what you can maybe do with your rehab is add in how much you paid for it, what your holding costs are to see kind of the whole project. Right now, this is just rehab costs, okay? But you can certainly do that if you're so implied. Um, and I think that the biggest thing with this is just the power of the potential, okay? You might not use the same reports I do, but just open up your mind to the idea that as long as you have a super strong data set in QuickBooks, you can do some really awesome stuff with your business to help you make really good decisions, okay? So thanks so much for your attention with that. Um, I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy that download as well, and maybe it can be useful for your business, all right? And you kind of made it. This is it. Uh, we made it through the final lesson, so I'm going to come back in uh, just another kind of final video to kind of round things out and to kind of summarize and um, to kind of bring an end to Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. Hey, this is Nick again from Income Digs. I hope you enjoyed that lesson that came straight from Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. And if you like that lesson, if you wanna see everything that led up to that, how to set up your books, how to get your data in that um, specific way, then you should definitely sign up for the VIP list. You're gonna be alerted as to when we're launching the product and uh, we're gonna have more special pricing and, and more sneak peeks and all that kind of stuff for you as we get ready to launch this course in the next month or two, all right? So feel free to sign up for the VIP list. If you have a question about what you saw, if you have a question about the course, feel free to put it in the comments below. Email me directly at nick at and we'll see you on the next tutorial.